another episode of Shock Treatment with Mel and Maddie and Bill. Whoa! How are you guys? I need glasses now. We're hanging in there. We were just saying, like, we're bored out of our skulls not being able to do anything, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. Do you live together or something like that? What, what no. It? No. It just I live looks in Rhode that Island. Way. Yeah, I live in Rhode Island. Matt lives in Massachusetts. Oh, you're, oh, you're in different states. Mm-hmm. Well, I know spiritually, Matt, though. We, we, spiritually, we live together. Like, he's like a few miles from my hometown. Hang on. Yeah. We're South Shore yeah. boys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We linked over that in, in the beginning. Yeah, right. We did. He comes we, back and we do these big, like, uh, South Shore events. Like, uh, you know, we burn the owls and stuff. You're in Weymouth, right? Uh, I was in Weymouth, yeah. Now I'm over in the Whitman. Whitman. But close. Still, yeah. Still I close. Whitman, no. I don't know Whitman. No. I don't know Whitman at all, in fact. Yeah. Whitman's a little more suburban than the Weymouth area, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. It's got more ghost stories. <laughs> well, we, you never know. Weymouth, I'm sure, has its endless amount of ghost stories. Yeah. How you been dealing with the COVID situation over there, Bill? Pretty good. We're we're in Woodstock now. We 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 usually live in Manhattan. Yeah. Ever since August, we've been basically in Woodstock because um, we uh, it's just uh, it's easier here because in New York, what which I love, I love the living. congestion of the city. There's more people to have to worry about. Yeah. yeah. It's also every time you leave the house in New York, you have to wear a mask. Here we we can do certain things without wearing a mask, you know. And if you're driving in a car, you don't wear a mask. And if you're uh, uh, walking around your property, you don't have to wear a mask. In New York, you have to wear a mask the minute you leave the house. Yeah. In fact, in our apartment house, you have to wear it in the lobby. So you have to wear it the minute, the minute you leave the house, the, the, your apartment. You have to put on a mask, and it gets that's a drag for me. I I don't like it. I mean, yeah. I do it. I, I'm not one of these people that doesn't want to wear a mask. I do because I think it's very important. Very yeah. Important. But I don't enjoy it, so you know it's 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 more fun here in Woodstock. Yeah, I just found out Friday. I'm finally going to be eligible to get my my first COVID shot. We got both of ours already, but that, yeah. that's we're older. Yeah, you know, you know, we we got to to do it. So so we had the second one last week. Yeah, I get my first one Friday. They finally decided that uh, as home health aides that were <laughs> eligible now to have it done. Yeah. You're a home health aide, are you? Yeah. Right. The have grown up job. Recording? Have we yep. started recording? Yeah, oh, yeah, we're recording. We were, we were, yeah, we record. Okay. The, <laughs> Woodstock's a nice area. I remember going up there a while back, okay. 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, it's really great. And are you close to the... the a lot of you, snow at the moment. It's going to snow again. Yeah. There's several inches. What is, yeah, that's what they were saying here, about four to eight, possibly, oh. on like Thursday into Friday. So. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, I'm waiting to see. At yeah. least today we had a lot of rain, so you know the mountains of snow from the last storm are dwindling. So at least if we get another big amount of snow, it's not going to be that bad to have to shovel. No, I've got wood. Melting today, a lot, of, a lot of thaw, and so a lot of the slush. fog. Oh yeah, right. fog was really bad today. The fog? Yeah. Yeah, the fog here. Right. Wow. Now, where is Monroe Island, Melissa? Um, I'm currently in West Warwick, but I grew up in Cranston. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So Which is nice. You, Melissa, what's, what's, what's your deal with, with this? Are you a filmmaker? Um, I'm starting to dabble. Um, I, I got into all of this by going to horror conventions. That's how I met with Matt, met up with Maddie and how we became friends. Mm -hmm. And then I had started uh, doing a podcast with another female that's on the network, the Dorkening network with us. And I just, my personality didn't mesh with hers. So I decided to do, start this mm -hmm. podcast and ask Matt to be my co-host on wow. this. So we've been doing this now that we're, this is the start of our third year. Yeah. Very good. Fun. Podcasting's the new the new way almost. It's the new platform. That's yeah. the new medium, you know. It totally is. Especially in a COVID time. We got into the podcasting just the right time, like right before COVID kicked in. Uh -huh. So like it, now that film's kind of all wrapped up for a little bit, uh, it's good that we can still, you know, do something creative with this. But we can hollow. 
Yeah. Or is it hollows? What was the hollow? Wicked hollows. Hollows. Hollows like trees, yeah. Yeah. Billy is going to be in the Wicked Hollows coming up, you know. I'm assuming that Wicked has a double meaning. Wicked, yeah, because of the, the, the New England and the, and the, the, the bad news, yeah. I mean, if you're from <laughs> Boston, it's got to it's have the double meaning, right? Yeah, we got uh, it's based off of the Bridgewater Triangle down here and our folklore, uh, loosely based off of yeah. I love the, I love the ghost stories, the the creepiness of it. I like all types of horror movies, but like those ghost stories, I think a well done ghost story is not to be messed with because uh, it can touch on different vibes. Yeah, so this is a ghost story. This, this, yeah, it's kind of like a yeah, it's a go, it's it's a ghost story for sure. Yeah, great, great. Without going too deep, you know. Is my character a ghost? No. He's the life of the party. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be misconstrued as a ghost. It, it, it could be left open. It could, he's one of those people that bring bring the, bring the folks into a situation. Without without you, they might never have found themselves in a bad situation. So you got to take pride in that, you know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, Mr. Whedon. Yeah. Let's uh let's kick off where it all began. You know, you're a man of many arts. But uh, when, when did it? When did he, the creative spirit first kick off in you? You remember, young about, child? About five years old. I, I I was I always wanted to be an actor. Actually, that was the first thing I wanted to be was be an actor. But uh, my first talent was at, at music, and I, I I picked up piano pretty fast, around five. And I started to write little tunes and stuff like that. Um, also, around that same time, I started to talk. And when I started to talk, I, I talked for a, little, a little while before that, but I stuttered very badly, very, very badly. It was, it was a very, really bad stutter. And I couldn't get sentences out. And, and this persisted for many years. So <clears throat> somewhere along the line, I gave up my dream to be an actor. I just gave it up because I couldn't talk. So I figured, I concentrate on the music end of things. So uh, um, in high school and college, I wrote songs and they went over real well and then came to New York and I had a, I picked up a partner, a, a, a writing partner in school and college. We came to there, we started to write songs and we, they started to sell to clubs and stuff and cabarets. They were, basically, they were funny songs, they were comedy songs. Yeah. I I, I, say, I saw that you've won awards for your cabarets. Yeah, that that was actually later. But 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 I started writing songs for other people, and uh, um, they they the people performed them for clubs, and people laughed at them. So we we, we got some some uh, a career started. And then I I still didn't become an actor because I stuttered. <laughs> <laughs> And then in the early 70s, this goes, I'm, I'm older than anybody you know, probably. <laughs> I, turned I turned 80 in 2020, 80. So, Happy yeah, so belated. Yeah, I'm sorry? Happy belated. Oh, yeah, thanks. So I, I started in the, in the early 70s. Uh, somebody asked me and my partner, my, my writing partner, if we would like to sing our songs in a club. And uh, we had we had we we'd sung them at parties, at private parties in New York, and people loved them. So and they lo and they liked the way we did them. And there I I was singing when I sang, I didn't stutter so much. And I and when I was singing with somebody else, I didn't stutter at all. So that was okay. So somebody asked us to do these uh, songs in a club, and we did it. And we got a, a really nice review in the New York Times for our our stuff. So that yeah. that kicked me off as a performer. And then we, we began to perform. We, we were picked up as a, a manager came along that wanted to handle us. He happened to be one of the biggest managers in show business, a guy named Jack Rollins, who you may know his name. He, he was ma the manager for Woody Allen and Dick Cavett yeah. and, and David Letterman and, all, and uh, all sorts of other people. And he produced most of Woody, Woody Allen's movies. So he, he signed us on. And was a very nurturing uh, um, person in our lives. And uh, we, uh, we began to perform a lot. And, that, and, and then somewhere along the line, we picked up a woman and we became a trio. And 
And that's when we began to, to, to win these awards for cabaret performing. Uh, we became a trio called Whedon, Finkel, and Fay. David Finkel was the guy that I'd met in college, or in school. And Sally Fay was the woman that we, uh, she added, we added to our group. So Whedon, Finkel, and Fay became a, a pretty big force in corporate entertainment, which is business theater or industrial shows. It, it, yeah. it goes with all sorts of different things. We, we used to write and perform industrial shows or business theater. We toured the countries like seven or eight times. And we, we, we were doing the um, sales presentations for Fortune Magazine. And because Fortune Magazine was involved with a lot of Fortune 500 companies, they got us to write things for them. And yeah. And so the 80, the eighties were pretty lucrative for me. Yeah. Is is that um, how you, it came about? Where you because I was, I saw that you've created material for like people like Carol Channing and Millie Tomlin and Jerry actually, that, Stiller. That that was that was previously. That was when I was writing for people. Uh, I I wrote for Lily and I performed a little bit with Lily and I wrote for Carol Channing and I wrote for Dick Sean and other people. Uh, that, that that was as a writer and. It's fantastic. I mean, it's a, I, I didn't mention it, but that was a, a great part of our, our writing career. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, um, but th that sort of got left behind when we became performers. And, and then we became cabaret performers and we won awards for our cabaret performing and, uh, and it went very well. Then in the 90s, you know, I, I'm not a Republican. That, that, Maybe kind of obvious, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not a Republican, but but I give Ronald Reagan a little credit because Reaganomics were what made the companies have a little discretionary income to spread around to us in the '80s. Yeah. <laughs> but but then when uh, when the '80s were over, the '90s came in and the money wasn't quite so uh, so free. Yeah. Also, in '89. I'd been married for 18 years to a woman, and we split up in 89. Uh, I, I had a daughter. I, I have a daughter. Uh, <laughs> you gave her back. Was, <laughs> my was World Wrestling Entertainment, by the way, which, which is amazing. Yeah, oh, that's cool. She yeah, works yeah, for the yeah. WWE? It, it, yeah, she does. Oh, that's is cool. she a wrestler? Does she write for them? No, she's a, she's a digital librarian. She 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 funnels all their stuff on the, on the, the B-roll and, you know, with Netflix and all sorts, yeah, she doesn't. I, she doesn't understand what she does, so I don't understand. I mean, she, <laughs> she understands it, but she's never been to, able to explain it. Uh, but she's brilliant. She, she's anyway. I had a child with my with my first wife, and uh, we split up in '89. And it was devastating because we'd been married. It was really devastating, and I needed I needed to do something. And I and at this point, I'd been performing for quite a while, so I felt better about performing so i decided what I, i'm going to take that leap and try to become an actor which i always wanted to be and i saw this casting notice in a publication one of the casting publications and it sounded like a trauma movie it said yeah. i think they said it was called k-man and i and the description of it, i said they didn't say trauma i said this sounds like trauma and i loved trauma i loved the Toxic Avenger. I thought it was so hysterically funny. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply for this job and see what, see where the chips fall. Yeah. So I applied for the job, and uh, I got it, and it was amazing. And that was Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, which has become quite a well known. Has quite the cult fo following. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, uh, I played the villain. I played the hit, the head villain. Reginald Stewart, who turns into the evil one. It's a great part. And, yeah, and, that was uh, classic. Uh, yeah, and uh, we, we had a ball doing that. And uh, then uh, my career sort of took off a little bit. One of the big things I did was I was in the very final cast in New York of the longest running show in the history of the American theater, a musical called The Fantastics. Which you may have heard of, the yeah. very famous show, the Fantastic. Yeah. and I was I was in that for a year and a half, so that was a big deal for me. Um, that was in the early two thousands, and then uh, um, from that point on, I started to do movies and started to uh, do a lot more plays and stuff. 
And uh, here I am today. And um, I'm doing a lot of stuff. A lot Rock of stuff. star. Rock star. Which do you pre which do you prefer to do better um, or do more often this the actual performing in front of a live audience or the film work? Well, I, I I love doing them both. I, it's it's a completely different experience. I I think all in all, I prefer to do films. I if if I was forced into a de decision, what would you like to do for the rest of your life? I would like to be on film, but I but I really enjoy performing live. It, it's a, it's a whole different experience and it's it's great. So yeah, I, because you never know what's going to happen. You yeah. never know what's going to happen. And what the, the thing about what, when I did the Fantastics, which is an unusual experience, I did six hundred performances of the same show. And when you do six hundred performances, you really have to work on keeping it fresh because some people are seeing it for the first time. You know, you're doing it for the five hundred and twenty third time, but some people are seeing it for the first time. They have yeah. to, you have to, so that's a challenge, and it's a it's a challenge. I love meeting, I, I, of course. I I never expect to do another six hundred performances of another show, but you, you never know. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I love, I grew up loving comedy. It was like stand up comedy is probably my first love, and to go back to you with the stutter thing, you know, I was very shy kid, you know, and didn't like to talk. So even though I think stand up might have been my first love, like I never would have attempted it in a million years. You know what I mean? Well, but what, I my like, I, yeah. what my partner and I did on stage was a version of stand-up. We, yeah. we, we did songs that were funny, and we and we uh, we we talked, and we we worked out our 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 act at a place called the Improvisation, which I don't know whether you've ever heard of it or not, but it started. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. In, now it's in L.A. It, it 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 was in both places for a while. It's sort of the New York. Thing has kind of faded out. Yeah. But it, it started in New York. It was very big, and and for most of the '70s, I performed with my my first partner, David Finkel, at uh, the Improvisation, and the owner loved us because he could always slot us in between two stand-up comics. Because if he slotted us a regular singer in, she might be wonderful, he might be wonderful, but they weren't funny. Yeah. He, he liked to keep the laughs going, so. So like Jay Leno would go on, and then we would go on, and then yeah. Andy Kaufman would go on. But but it, but it would be you wouldn't lose the laughs because you are a nice segue in between into in between. Yeah, right. Yeah. For instance, yeah. And it was yeah. a it was like a time before the clubs came in, like when before stand up clubs really became. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think it, were, it was yeah, stand up clubs. There was a place called Danger Fields. Oh, I love, Rodney Dangerfield's like my favorite performer of all time. I love Rodney. Rodney Dangerfield, so that, that was around then too. I mean, so there there were those clubs, but there yeah. were. Yeah. It re it reminds me a little bit of like in the older days before there was clubs. Though it would be you'd go you'd go to like it, it, it'd be a bar or maybe like an adult gentleman's club, and you would see the lineup of you'd see like a singing troupe, a dancer, a comedian, and it would just mm -hmm. be a smorgasbord of all entertainment for that evening. You know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's right. cool. And you got you got to meet Jerry Stiller, you said? Oh, I, I'm, the, the great Jerry Stiller? We were great, great, rest in peace. Yeah. We were pretty close. We were pretty close. I my my partner and I wrote for Jerry and Ann, his wife Ann. Nice. And we 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 wrote a, a, a TV show for them. And I got I got to know Jerry and Ann very well and they they were both wonderful people. Legendary, legendary. Yeah. <laughs> Legendary, but also great people. I mean, yeah, yeah. A lot of people you meet in the business are not, are not as great. Big secret, but, <laughs> but but Jerry and Anna were fantastic. They were great. They were great. Yeah. yeah, they always had that vibe, like they were having fun doing what they were doing. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which is the the important thing. They always were, but you know what? They 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 they, they were having fun, but they yeah. were fiercely intelligent, and they really knew what they what they really knew what they were doing. It wasn't like. It wasn't slap happy. It wasn't slap dash. It was they were it, especially Anne. She was like very, very precise and and determined to do the right thing. Yeah. Jerry was more, but they, their chemistry was fantastic. Yeah. And they were, not, right. you know, and they, they were like they, they were like a groundbreaking duo, right? A team for a while, right? Yeah. Well, there was Mike Nicholson and Elaine May be, be, before them, and then Stiller and Mary. Yeah. The, yeah. The two. The two. Duos. And Ben Stiller, of course, is there. And then ben, ben Stiller, yeah, I mean, it goes on. And Amy like, Stiller, his sister. She, and Amy she, Stiller, yeah. He's also a wonderful performer. So, I mean, they both, they, it's a whole family of really good stuff, yeah. Yeah, to the heights, to the heights of it all, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. You, you brought you brought up Dangerfields. Did you ever get a chance to meet Rodney by any chance? I never did meet Rodney. No, yeah. but, but I know dozens of people who did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I never met him. Um, um, I met I met scads of people. Yeah. I never met Rodney. No, no, that, he was great. Oh, I love I love Ronnie. He, he opened up a lot of doors for comedians too. Like uh, like when you really look at the people that he kind of ushered in with those HBO specials, it's uh -huh. a lot of people that everybody knows nowadays. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh yeah. So you said you were you were a fan of Troma going in going into the audition. Um, what was the Toxic Avenger was your first introduction to Troma or like those sex comedies and stuff? I well, no I I think I I'd only, I think I'd only seen two Troma movies. Okay. Uh, one was the Toxic Avenger. Which I loved. Yeah. The other one, class of Newcomb High, yeah. which I which I also loved. <laughs> yeah, those are both. I think those are actually the two trauma movies that got me started on the whole trauma yeah. vibe. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I I I had a great affinity with that stuff. So so I so I I was very taken with the idea of doing a trauma movie. Of course, I never dreamt that I would get it. Yeah. Uh, because there were so many people that went up for those parts. But here's a funny story. Now, you, I don't know whether you ever heard of Jack Valenti. Have you heard that name, Jack Valenti? Yeah. He used to be the head of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, head of the Oscars, basically. And he was a, he, he was a, I think he was right winger, and he, he was very Republican, very rigid, and did not like independent films. Certainly didn't like trauma. Yeah. And and shot trauma down. And and, and Lloyd had a huge uh, animosity toward him, shall we say. So they were, Lloyd and his wife, Pat, who is a wonderful woman, mm -hmm. were watching um, the tapes of the people that auditioned, the audition tapes, right? Which, one of which was mine. Uh, I forget what I auditioned. Maybe I auditioned with some of the lines from the movie. I don't know. But they were looking at the tapes, and they went through, and they looked at mine, and I guess they thought, that guy's good. And then they went to the next one. And then Pat said, wait a minute, go back. Doesn't that guy look like Jack Valenti? <laughs> Me? <laughs> and they decided, yeah, I did. And if you look at pictures of Jack Valenti, they're right, I do. I look like yeah. Jack Valenti. And that got me the part because she said, "Wouldn't it be great if if the villain looked like somebody you really hate?" <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, look look as big. Bill's a great actor. For any, he really. Did you do any Shakespearean type stuff? Because you have such a presence to you that you. Yeah, could, yeah, you yeah I've, I've done quite a bit of Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he has yeah. that vibe. Um, yeah. Well, you know, being a fan, what was it like meeting a nice, uh, we'll say younger Lloyd Kaufman, probably Michael Hurst at the time. I know he's very behind the scenes, but um, you know, what was it like that that time? Lloyd and I are almost exactly the same age. He's a little bit younger, a few years younger than I am. Yeah. And we both went to Yale. So we had that in common. And uh, Lloyd was always great to me. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he respected me. He, he, uh, he, uh, he never gave me any shit at all. He was, yeah. Like, and, and we're still friends. And, yeah. and uh, we don't see each other that much at all. But when we do, it's it's very, um, very pleasant. He's, 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 he's always very cool to me. And Pat yeah. is, too. They, 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 they seem to like me. They seem to respect me. And uh, we're going to do a Kabuki, uh, a Kabuki Man sequel now, you know. You, you know I that. know, yeah. We're excited about that. Well, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We, we did a trailer for it. I, I, I realized today, because Doug Sackman, who's going to be playing Kabuki Man in the sequel, he posted on Facebook, it was exactly two years today that, that I went down to Philly and filmed that thing. It was exactly two years today. It, oh, wow. It's taken, it's taken that long to get the thing going, which it often does. You know, these things are, one wasn't built in a day, and neither was movies. And, yeah, it's true. And they get, uh, and then now you got, and then you got COVID adding another monkey wrench into the whole exactly, production. Exactly. I, I, a year ago this month, a year ago February fourteenth. I mean, it's all. It's all, that was two years ago. I went to Philly. One year ago, I went to North Carolina, and shot a film, my part of a film, with my co-star, who is Michael St. Michael's, who was the leading character in the Greasy Strangler. You know the Greasy Strangler. Oh yeah. Well, he played the Greasy Strangler. So Michael and I are the leads in this movie called The Once and Future Smash. 
And we yep. went down to North Carolina, we filmed that. And they haven't been able to complete it because of COVID. Because yeah. they need to do scenes with groups of people without masks on and they can't do it because because it's an independent feature. They can't spend that. I mean, there are there are, there are big union movies that spend enormous amounts of money to be protected from COVID and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so the movie is on hold, but hopefully, and I think I'm praying that in the next few months they get to finish it because it's going to be awesome. This movie is going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah we a lot of just about everything I see you going on, I get excited for. I did another uh, movie that, that, that's out now called Psycho Ape. If you, if you, yeah, we've sorry we actually we Greg's a good a good Greg's friend a, of the show. Greg's a good pal. Here we had him on the show. Who is Addison? Oh God, well Greg. Addison too. Addison hasn't been on the show yet. I'm at Addison at Gross Fest, a convention in um, Pennsylvania, like four or five years ago. But and Greg there as well. Greg's been on the show. Addison, we'll get on Addison on soon. Greg, Greg is. I mean, they, we they love Greg. Are. Yeah, Greg is awesome. Greg yeah. is one of my favorite people, and so is Addison, by the way. But they, and they all, all the people in that movie were awesome. Yeah. Addison, Greg, Kansas Bowling, who plays the female lead, yep, and Steve Albers, who plays the ape. They they were all amazing people. They, I just had such a great time on that film. Have you seen it yet? Yeah, of course, <laughs> numerous times. I'm sorry. Numerous times, we're big supporters. <laughs> we're we're no. big fans of Doctor Zumas. We're gonna get a group. <laughs> we're gonna do a I've group episode too. Times. I've seen it numerous times, and believe me, I haven't seen all my movies numerous times. Yeah. Some of my movies, I it's been hard getting through once. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you make as many movies as I have, some of them are real turkeys. But I love Psycho Wave. I just think it's great. Everybody needs turkeys for Thanksgiving. Psycho Ape was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. I laughed out loud so much. And my wife didn't. It's not. It's, it's, not. it's just so far-fetched and crazy that. It's totally out of out of sync, out of, out of whack. It's yeah. Totally... It's, it's, uh, it's... yeah. On Amazon.com right now for anybody that wants to check it out, streaming. You know, Psycho, yeah. Psycho Ape, are you familiar with Hectic Knife, of course? Greg's film before that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Now, yeah. I know, I know Addison, Addison directed Psycho Ape. Um, and Greg was more, I think he produced and was the cinematographer, right? Or editor? He was the editor, too. Yeah. Editor. Um, but he... And the editing really, I think the editing is what really nails that movie. The oh, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Greg, Greg's, even though Greg didn't direct it, his essence is kind of all over it. And I always say that, like with Troma, like you said the thing about every now and then there's some tr turkeys. You know, with Troma, you kind of get that sometimes, too. It, like hectic knife was such a breath of fresh air in a way because yeah. like it's such a fun movie it and it's like it rides that line of like campiness where it could easily go too campy but it it, uh -huh. it doesn't it stays like kind of like lloyd's films where they're like intelligent campiness you know what i mean right. like that you know what i mean well the the funny thing about i don't know what when did you have when did you have greg on the show recently like two months ago three months ago like right i i think i think the, the secret, which I don't think they would mind me saying, is yeah. that Greg sort of co-directed it with Addison, but he he insisted that Addison take the credit because it was Addison's baby from the beginning. Yeah. But they both sort of directed it. Greg's Greg a good is, guy like that. Greg is, Greg is not, awesome. not too many filmmakers would give that up. Yeah, I yeah we ended up having a conversation yesterday. Um, I was going through some new app that I found called Fawesome and hectic knife was on there mm -hmm. so i had tagged him because i was getting ready to watch it and then he messages me he was like oh my god thanks for you know sharing that you're watching the movie and he goes i can't respond i'm in facebook jail i'm yeah. like oh welcome to my world <laughs> yeah. he told me that too because he, he, he made some comment about that was ridiculous yeah I, I never know what facebook is doing you know they're, 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 i use it all the time but it's but it's it's a mystery to me yeah. I don't get their algorithms. I, I don't know why some people get my posts and other people don't. And it's I, I don't get it. And I, and I don't really. It's, see it. I, yeah. I, I some people they it. just want to be angry sometimes. Right. But <laughs> I, I enjoy it anyway. So no, but the the thing about um, the the Greg thing with Addison, Addison put the thing together. He yeah. he hired me. He hired Kansas. He hired all the and Steve, Steve is his roommate. Steve Albers who plays the ape is. Addison's roommate, so they they knew each other for a long time, and he he sort of put the package together, and then he got Greg on board to to, to do it with him, 
And uh, just, I just, I mean, it worked out great. I, I, I love it. I've, I've seen it about know, eight or nine times. It's just amazing. And I think I, if, I remember, if I remember correctly, when we had Greg on the show, I think he also said that both him and Addison, at the time that they were making Psycho Ape, they were both going through a very dark time in their lives. Man, were they ever. Oh, God. Talk about it. So Thank yeah, so to be able to put out that kind of a movie with everything that they were both going through at the time says a lot for them as well. Amazing. Hard heels. They, they were going through really dark times, and they came up with one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. So that what do you what do you what do you can what can you say? I just love both those guys. I love yeah. them. I love them. I would I would do anything for them. Yeah. Would you kill? Would you kill for them? Would you uh, kill? Murder for them? Kill? <laughs> Depending on who I was. Saying, yeah. <laughs> Back no, no, no. Another another <laughs> filmmaker I like to put in the category with Greg is uh, Paul McLarney. Uh, you got to work with him on The Ungovernable Forest. I always thought that he's a local dude. I think he retired, unfortunately, but he was a dude who always made those type of movies like in a more like uh, higher brow, better way. You know what I mean? So you saw The Ungovernable Forest. I mean, of course, too. yeah. I'm a big fan, Bill. I watch everything you're in. I try and see. <laughs> I've seen every Bill Weed movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know you'd seen that. Of course, got the VHS no, somewhere around here. My re, my real life wife is is Lloyd's wife in that movie. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you remember. There's a scene where they laugh their asses off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and their son is the uh, the hero or the so called hero of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> It's a weird movie. <laughs> it is a weird movie. I like that about it though. I love the weirdness of it. It's very trauma like, you know. I I. That, that was a very challenging part for me. I, I really loved playing that part. Yeah. And those guys were, not, and, and there's a guy named Dave Sullivan. I'm, I know Dave Sullivan, yeah, from around here, yeah. Sullivan is awesome, too, yeah. 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 yeah so, no, like, no. You, you, I'm sure, like, like, you would really prefer, like, a meaty role uh, over, you know, just a regular father-type character any day of the week, or the time and a yeah, place no, for each no, thing? Basically, well, I, I, as, as you can see, I, I've, I've, I've engineered it that I don't get cast as a banker. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I, would be your dream role? <laughs> oh, my dream role. I've, I, I've already, I've already played roles that I would, I, I, I don't have a dream role because I never know what is around the corner. Like yeah. whoever dreamt that I would play Dr. Zumas. I mean, whoever, whoever dreamt there was such a part, you know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. such a blast. Oh my God. That, I so that, that could that, that can end up being your dream role just because of the fact that it was so much fun to do. I wrote that rap song, you know. That, I, I love. Oh, that was song. great. The rap song was the <laughs> best part. That was my creation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember Greg saying that was you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought Greg did it because he's got that musical background with like the documentary and all that stuff, and he was like, "Nope, that was Bill." And I was like, "Whoa." Yeah, I decided that, that that would be something that he would do. The Zumas would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. nothing this wouldn't do. And the Not funny thing is, is even your tone, the way the way you speak, your voice, yeah. you sound like Doctor Loomis. Yeah. So being Doctor Zoomis, it was like that was just that was perfectly Perfect. made for you. Yeah. With his eyes, they were the devil's eyes. <laughs> yeah, can That's totally great. hear. I can. I'm like picturing the scene in Halloween now. <laughs> well, Bill is in. great. There's a scene right. in Kabuki Man, in, in, in Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD, where Reginald Stewart freaks out and goes, the time has come, my time. <laughs> <laughs> I think they electronically uh, 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 did something, they did something with my voice electronically in there. Though. Yeah. I, I thought Greg had done something electronically. He said, no, that, no, I didn't do a thing, but that's the way you said it. Yeah. The devil's eyes, not evil. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever lent your voice to any like uh, cartoon character type I, things I or? I haven't done cartoons, but I've done uh, I've done some voiceover stuff. I've, and my wife and I are currently reading audiobooks, which is which is something that, that was something that we could do in the COVID thing because yeah. we could do it in our house. So we, we've read we've read we've narrated several uh, several books. Like a few by Larry Bl Lawrence Block. Do you, do you know Lawrence Block? I think I've heard that name. Very famous mystery writer. He wrote a, a, a great book called Eight Million Ways to Die. 
it was made into a movie with, with Jeff Bridges. It, not not a good movie, but the focus. <laughs> was. Wasn't it like tried. a comedy western type movie? No, that's that's. Um, oh no, that's Eight Million Ways to Die in the West. I'm thinking of something. That's, that, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's more modern. That's that other guy. Yeah, Sean. Um, what's it, what's that guy's name? The, uh, the, the guy, the, the Ted guy, the guy who made it. Yeah, Seth yeah, McFarlane. yeah. Seth Sean. MacFarlane. Seth. Yeah, Seth. yeah, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, he was on top of the world for. He's still going strong. Yeah, he's got a lot of people don't like him. Um, well, you know, when I, when you get to a certain level, I don't know anything of his personal life. You could, uh, but once you get to a certain level, people just don't like you. I think. <laughs> he did that thing on the Oscars too, which people thought was misogynistic or something like that. Oh uh, yeah, he's seen a lot of boobs or whatever, whatever, whatever it was. It was it was kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Not, you gotta be careful. Like, not, Especially not at that level, I mean, at that yeah, I mean, at that height at that height of the game, you got to expect if you're gonna you say something off color, you know what I mean? You're gonna catch heat for it. Yeah. I mean, with everything that's been going on lately, you've got Marilyn, you've got all these allegations coming yeah. out against Marilyn yeah. Manson for abuse. Um, Joss, Joss Whedon, Whedon just Joss Whedon. it just came yeah. out about Joss Whedon. Yeah, Whedon that, he spells his name differently for me though. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to clarify. Yeah, it's, it's just I'm not related. It's there's just so much going on. It's like you gotta really watch what you do and say, just so that you know people don't misconstrue what well, you're yeah, doing. You know, my my feeling is, if if you're a decent human being, you're not gonna say those things. Yeah. I mean, I the only the only way I would say something anything like that would be ironically or in quotes or, or quoting somebody else. I would never, I would never right. say that to women or to men for that matter. I'm just I'm, I'm I, I like to think of myself as a moral human being. Yeah. yeah, it's like you got to give respect to get respect. Like so immoral movies. <laughs> <laughs> I had a quick question about the once in future smash. You brought it up earlier. You got Sophia, Mike, and Neil. You know, um, without your head, we've been on that show a few times. How how'd that come about? Because that just kind of felt like a, a a bunch of friends getting together at a convention making a film. How'd that how'd that whole film come about? The once in future smash. Yeah. Oh well, no, it wasn't that at all. It was. Uh... A very well planned. Um, um, well, I didn't and, mean it in a bad way. No, no. <laughs> I met Michael. Interesting. Yeah. I, I met Michael for the first time on the Ungovernable Force. Yeah. He was helping out. He was helping Paul, Michael, mm -hmm. and Michael Arnie out. And um, uh, I met him then, and we stayed in touch. And uh, I, I was in LA shooting a. Uh, a, a, a web series called Mr. Student Body President, which was, was a, is a very good show, which is which is streaming on Amazon Prime now. Yep, also. I was going to ask you about that because I saw that. Yep, it's, a, it's set in high school. I played the assistant principal. It was a real dork. <laughs> it, was real, it was a real fun part. Not too large a part. But yeah. It's like quite small in, in the scheme of things, but it was a good part. And so, so I... I I, met, I reconnected with Michael and Sophia, his wife, out there, and they're great. And we just we hit it off very, very nicely. So time goes on, and uh, we, we kept in touch. And by the way, I auditioned for the part of the, the Greasy Strangler, and, and Michael got it. And they, they chose the right person because he's much more suited for that part than I am. Anyway, that aside, I never met him. Michael and Sophia asked Michael and me to be in this film. And they said, they described it, it sounded awesome. And they said, we're going to go down to North Carolina, to Charlotte, North Carolina, the weekend of February 14th, whatever. And there's a thing called Mad Monster Party. And that's the, that's the, the, the old convention. Thing. Yeah, the convention that they do every year, I guess. And Mad Monster Party. And, we're just gonna hang out there and do all your scenes, all your scenes in the three days that, that we, we're down there. So that sounds awesome. And they they gave us a pretty nice piece of change for it. They were cool. really generous, really generous. So um, they're, 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 I just, I love them too. They're, 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 they're other people that, that I'm crazy about. Yeah, so, they're good folks. They're local, they're, they were originally were local people. Local to? Uh, Massachusetts, I believe. I believe, yeah. 
Did it get overwhelming? Ready. Did it get overwhelming at any point by oh. being at a convention and filming no. a movie at the same time? It was a lot of fun. We, 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 no, it wasn't overwhelming to me at all. Uh, we, we just had to keep our focus where it was. There were people all over the place, you know, all over the place. But yeah. we, a lot of them we used as extras. And, and they were, they seemed to be delighted with, with the idea of being in a film. So there you go. And they, they loved it. So, uh, we, we had we had a lot of fun and it's a it's a it's a very interesting just it's a fascinating premise for a film which i don't want to tell you because right it's, yeah don't, don't spoil none it, it's have you heard about what, what it's about i i have a rough idea about what it's about but i don't we won't go i, I will have them on the show it's, we'll, sophie and mike will have on the show uh neil if he yeah. wants to come on to talk about it neil's great too I just don't neil's a good it. man too yeah you are you you a know a lot of our circle. <laughs> I, I've seen right. you like the cartoon. Are you a part of without your head like a, like a host or just kind of a part of the team? No, I, I, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a host, but I, but I'm part of the friendly creeps. They call it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a T-shirt with that with that caricature on it. I've yeah. Got coffee cups with that caricature. I've got all, all, all that caricatures everywhere. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's they're great. I just I've met so many great people, but you know. Yeah. They're, Certain people who I love more than others, and <laughs> Addison, yeah. Brooklyn, Kansas, C, Michael, Sophia, Neil, they just like in the pantheon for me. Yeah, you worked with another one of our, our friends in our circle, uh, Mr. James? James Balsamo. James Balsamo? Oh, he, well, I did work with him, yeah. I catched I mean, the, the day you, too? Yeah. I met James at that mad monster party. That, that's where I met him. Yeah. He, he, had, he had the booth right next to our booth. Yeah. He, we set up a booth for our characters, and uh, James was in the very next booth, so I got to know him a, a bit. And he he, he, gave, he gave me a T-shirt, which I of Killer Waves, which yep. is one of the films, and uh, <coughs> which I, which I just wore the other day. And uh, yeah, then then he asked me Good to mind. do this this thing, which oh, which which one is that? Hollywood. I thought I'm that was Hollywood me. Werewolf. Oh, I had, I have a, I have, I wore, I have a bite school, I have a bite school t-shirt and I have one for the lich and I, I've worn like both of those this week. And then I got my acid bath hoodie hanging up in the closet. <laughs> I'm not a support. I don't, I don't support my peers or anything. <laughs> All right, right. So, so anyway, I, he, then, then James asked me to do this little, uh, vignette for, um, for, um, with the catch of the day too. Catch of the day too. And have you seen it? Yep. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, I was in it. I had a cameo in there. I played oh, Riffra. I played Trouble. I played like Towny Trouble. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I have to see it again. So I I devised this. He, he said, it's, it, you're supposed to be somebody who's been abused by the lead character, the, the, the anti-hero, to put it mildly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which he plays. So, so, <laughs> so, um. I, I devised my character was a double jointed person, and I was told by somebody who who's a very good old friend. But she wrote she wrote me she said there is no such thing as double jointed. That's a that's a myth. Nobody is double jointed. But she yeah. said it's okay. But but uh, so I, de I devised this double jointed guy, who was doing something impossible to himself, and the cop <laughs> the cop interrupted me. And I was I, I, I still got a resentment. If I, I was just about to do it, and then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James is fun. James, one of the nicest and hardest working guys in our 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 our, uh, our little corner of entertainment, I say. Yeah, it's gotten to the point where I can't keep up because every time I turn around, he's putting out a new movie. Hell yeah, James. James yeah, and and James sat on a panel with us too. Yeah. At that convention, uh, so we, and Michael St. Michael's, of course, who, who I've become very friendly with too. Oh, he's great. I love Michael St. Michael as well. You, you were up for Greasy Strangler. The, the Greasy Strangler, I, I came to very late in the game. Like I, I waited a little bit, but I was blown away at how great that was. It was very trauma like, very yeah, trauma like, very trauma like, and yeah. very funny. Very oh, funny. and very funny. And Michael is amazing in it. And yeah, he's. Absolutely the right casting. I would have been able to play it, but I would. But he was. I wasn't perfect for it. He was perfect for it. Uh, but I, 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 they, they, they went so far as to have me 
tape and you know, the audition and all that stuff. I was I was I was up for it, but uh, I was just as glad I didn't get it because something about it it just didn't feel right to me. Yeah, I, I would have loved doing it, but it didn't feel right to me, and I couldn't have felt have felt totally comfortable. But yeah, Michael was perfect. He's, he he was perfect for it, and and he's and he was great to perform with. He was great. We we got along really well, and we we stay in touch like all the time. Yeah, Michael's a good dude. Another yeah. member of the the the, uh, the friendly creeps over there, if I remember correctly. He's in the friendly creeps, and so is is Neil's brother Troy. You, you know Troy? Yeah, terrible Troy. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good awesome. guy. He, he he drew all those pictures, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talented very, family. Yeah, very talented, very a Renaissance guy. He said, he's uh, he's he's very, very sharp too. He has has a lot of good things to say. Yeah, no, no. That, that, I, in the last few years, I've gotten to work with some really awesome people. Yeah. So, so the, how? Well, real quick. Sorry, you can go first. <laughs> mine's real quick. During the during the Greasy Strangler thing, did you ever get a chance to meet uh, Jim Hosking? I did, but, no, I didn't ever meet him, but uh, we, we communicated. I mean, he he seems I, cool. I wouldn't mind meeting him. I think I, I like to think that Jim has become a fan of mine because he he he, he follows me and stuff like that. So that's good. To know Bill I think, is to be a fan. What do you think? I think Jim has uh, has started following me, or he he's, he made some nice comments, so I think he's kind of become a fan of me. Yeah, he's one of the new filmmakers to keep an eye out for. Yeah, oh, definitely. No, no, that that film is very awesome. Uh, yeah. You so other also, than other yeah. than doing the audio uh, audio books um, during COVID, what else have you been doing to keep busy and? Uh, Basically, you know, just hanging out and going to the gym and uh, um, uh, walking around Woodstock and doing my usual stuff. You know. Now you were also a part of Shitstorm recently as well, right? I was. I was. I got. I got to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. I just a minute. <coughs> it's not COVID. I, I guarantee you. It's just. A, <laughs> some, I know it comes through cold. This, it's coming okay. through Zoom nowadays, COVID, yes. Right, right. Um, uh, Shitstorm, yeah. Um, I've, uh, I, was, I did a cameo in that. Yeah. I, I sang the theme from Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD. Oh, Sergeant yeah. Kabuki Man, That's so NYPD, awesome. it's your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> so and, uh, that was fun. Yeah, so that marks like a, th a th thirty years with trauma. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Did, did that? Has there been any drastic changes since like the beginning and uh, anything you know change? What? You know? I I haven't done that many things for trauma. I mean, yeah. I, I I like to think that I'm one of their mainstay people, but I, I but think I, so. I, I, I've only done three three things for them. We did I did Kabuki Man, of course. Then I did uh, Toxic Avenger Part Four. Mm -hmm. Played an, um, an abortion doctor. Did, did, did you see that? Yep. Yeah. Citizen Toxie. And I tried to abort a Kabuki man's child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a gay. He was a, he was a trauma alumni. alumni. She is. Yep. She was my assistant. She's and great. She put, yeah. And she put the speculum in the wrong place. So when Kabuki man's baby kicked me, I, I fell across the room and, and, and the speculum went into my butt and opened <laughs> up my intestines. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the doctor ends up getting a rectal exam while he's examining his patient. <laughs> he, got, he, got, uh, he, he got dead, in fact. <laughs> you could, yeah, if you can take it, you can give it. Or however yeah. It goes. Give it, you I can struggled take it. across the room, and I fell on the stairs, and the receptionist said, uh, I'm sorry the doctor, <laughs> she had, she had to, I'm sorry the doctor just died of rectal something or other. <laughs> Would you like his voicemail? <laughs> <laughs> and that, See, that's that great that, humor that like you always find in those Lloyd movies. Funniest lines I've ever heard. I just love that line. Yeah, that's the the fun thing about Lloyd's movies is like, you know, certain you know in in different crowds of people, certain people will give trauma movies hard times. But those Lloyd's the things he directs are always really solid. They're conscious. They're intelligent. Yeah, yeah they have dick and fart jokes in them, but like. They're very intelligent and entertaining, and right. and he's he's socially conscious. Yeah, he's one of. I think uh, sadly, I think you know 
when he when he when he's no longer with us, I think they're gonna look back at Lloyd and be like, "Wow, like he you give him the respect." Then, unfortunately, I yeah, mean, a lot of pe- one of those posthumous type of deals. A, that- a lot of people give him love and respect now, but I think when he when he when he when when he you know and for, you know in the, in the future, I think that he'll get it more because uh, and when it, when it talk, when you get, talk about filmmakers, you know, like when I first started making movie movies, you know, there's no filmmaker I think that was nicer than Lloyd, who just ex- welcomed us down to New York, um, to throw him a building in Manhattan and do like f- free cameo, you know what I mean? And just give us advice and be super cool. Like, yeah. Was that the, the, the old drum? drum yeah, the old one. one. On Ninth Avenue? That, yeah. 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 That was where I, I got involved with him, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, that building, notorious building, you know what I mean, with all the props and all the posters, okay. just cool going in there, you know. We were in the new building. Um, they're in Queens yeah. now, I think. Queens, yeah. yeah. I thought we, it was. I, I've never been there. That one's nice too. It's it, it's a little. I think it's a little smaller, but it's like still nice. Just look at all the stuff that, you know. It's just beautiful walking into a trauma building and seeing Lloyd. It's just like, nice. he's such a. He, he's such a like a figure of of like indie spirit you know what i mean like when you see him it's just i don't know you get a you get a nice vibe from lloyd absolutely absolutely you know um, no no he, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a he's a, he's a he's an iconoclast and a, and, a, and a great icon <laughs> yeah yeah no he is and uh and i'm just very i mean kabuki man saved my life because i was going through that divorce I'm really in a very bad way. Yeah. And I, and I have to get, I have to do something to pull myself out of this. I'm gonna audition for this movie. And I got it and saved my life. So yeah. I, I, I owe a lot of my, of my, my happiness and my success to, uh, to Kabuki Man and and Lloyd and Pat. So I give them all the credit. Yeah. You know, it comes in a time and, uh, sadly, I heard recently that Doug, you know, Sackman, who is, you know, great great dude trauma alumni he just had some sadness which we send our love out to him oh, um, um but you know and, and now part two of kabuki man you know is kind of rolling out which is nice yeah i, I didn't I look like that. i surprised you I, I don't think i knew that about I, 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 did, not, did he have a loss in his family he had a loss in his family. Yeah. yeah, I think I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, our love's with him. Doug's a great guy. He did the punk rock yeah. Holocaust movies and all the trauma stuff he's done. He is a Pennsylvania great guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah, I really like him. He's, yeah. He's a, and and he's been very. Uh, he he tells me what what's happening as the Kabuki Man returns, uh, takes shape. And yeah. And now he he posted that thing today, which was the the most out there he's been about it. So yeah. Now we're, it, it's. It seems to have been. I know they were waiting for Lloyd to really greenlight it. It seems like he, he's he's greenlighted it, and it's going ahead, which is great. When the world needs a hero, Sergeant Kabuki Man. <laughs> the world needs a villain, Reginald Stewart. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. And what so better the, time that, to bring them back than now? Yeah. Exactly. Hell yeah. yeah. So, I dig. Well, hey. Bill, Mel, do you have any questions for Bill? I think I pretty much got everything in that I wanted to because I, I think the, the most thing that I was like blown away by was the fact that you created material for like Lily Tomlin and Carol Channing and Jerry Stiller yeah. and yeah. Yeah. you know all all the awards for cabaret performances. Like I know I know cabaret is not something that's an easy thing to perform on a on a nightly basis. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, no, I've been through I've, I've been through a lot of reinvention, and and I haven't seen Lily in years. But if she walked in the room, she'd say, "Neo!" <laughs> she, she, she's she's like an old friend. Yeah. Yeah. Could there think. be a Could there be a book in the future? My memoirs. The memoirs, huh? <laughs> I, I don't know about that. We'll, we'll see. You never know. I'd read it. I would read it too, just because of the fact that you know you've you've been in the entertainment industry for so long that I'm sure you've got some epic stories. I do, I do, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do. I, I, I could, I, if I wanted to, it, to me, for a person that's not a, a mega star to write memoirs seems a little 
pretentious, but I, I could probably be talked into it. <laughs> I agree. Well, that's the thing. It's like, I, I, you don't have to be, you know, Tom Cruise to write a memoir. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's people interested in the, the things that you went through, you know what I mean? And, and we're a part of, and that's all it takes. Absolutely true. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So have you exhausted your questions? If you have, I'm ready. <laughs> we're good. We're, we're, we're reaching, we're reaching our time limit over here, but we, we've loved having you on and we'll have you on again. I know we get the wicked hollows in the future. You know, I, we know yeah, you're a part. I can't wait to hear yeah. Can't think? wait because then I'll actually get to meet you in person at that point. We'd like to try and do it by the fall. It all kind of depends on the COVID deal. Um, Everything I, does. I'm a little, you know, I'm a little worried that I think that the COVID issue is going to stick around longer than we think it is. Even though when they say it's okay, even though when they say it's okay to go back to doing things, I think we're still going to be dealing with a lot of weird issues that could hold things up. You, you may be right. I, I tend to be a bit more optimistic than I, some people. Yeah. Think. I do. I used to be that way, and then I get too sad when it doesn't go that way. Mm. <laughs> but you, had no. that, you had that false start where they were getting hollow where you, you yeah. hired teenagers. <laughs> I know the worst, the worst mistake any person could make hiring teenagers. Teenagers. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta though, you know. But considering everything that happened that day, we still ended up making the best of, you know. Yeah, we made a short Everything that film. happened that day, we yeah. made it ended up making a short film. You're part of that, Melissa. I, 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 you're you're yeah. part of it. I do ward. I do wardrobe for Boombastic, yeah. and I'm actually in the in the process now of putting together oh. one of my first features. I'm doing a, a documentary on a, a a woman that I support that is very outspoken despite her handicaps. Oh wow! And the and the good that she does for people. So that's what the I'm working on. It, yep, it's going to be my first my first feature. Oh, good for you. Yeah. yeah. It's something I definitely never saw myself doing. Because if I if I had known like when I was younger that this would be something I'd be so interested in, you know, I, I, I never thought that you know my love for like a simple horror movie would turn into everything that it's turned into today. Amazing, amazing. I, like like you, I've blessed with the with the people that have come into my life, and you know, we all I love the fact how we're close we are. Where it's where Matt's my my surrogate family. Like yeah. that's the point we're at now. Sure. Matt's not Matt's not my friend anymore. He's family. <gasps> oh, <laughs> you're scaring me for a second. And so Bill, we'll have you back soon because Bill is now oh, our I family. I would love to come back, folks. You've been Go listening first. to Bill Whedon on Shock Treatment with Mel and Maddie, and we'll catch y'all on the next episode. Be well, be safe, be happy, be merry. Oh,